keeping them vows. I want us to know what to do with them. And so I'm going to do that tonight because I want to show you how to have a little bit more fun with all of this. And, um, and instead of just trying to chop away at, um, you know, relating the Hebrew characters to English characters, I want to begin to teach you how to do transliteration tonight. And it's still great to, to do what I had showed you how to do, and that is to take your name and convert it into Hebrew characters, to take a sentence. And, you know, I've seen a lot of your homework, and everybody's done a great job, everything that I've looked at. I mean, you're on it. Um, I think Annalyn uh, did the whole uh, uh, Psalms 119 for anybody who felt like that they were a little bit abused. Uh, that's the, I think that's the longest chapter in the Bible. And she converted every one of those English letters into uh, Hebrew characters. Uh, she was asking for special points, but I don't know, you know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Annalyn. That, that's a great job. Okay, but before I move into the vowels, and, and show you how easy we can make the vowels. I just want to talk a couple, th tell you a couple of things about that dot, okay? About the doggish. And uh, especially the begot, what we would call, and you heard me say it last time, uh, the begot, the calf at letters. And, um, and, I, and I said something wrong, you know? Uh, leave it to me, I, I say a number of different things wrong, but the good news is that I usually always correct myself and that's also why I encourage everybody else to correct me because I'll get excited and get run away, run away with things. But begging to cap it is just a way that we can remember these these uh, characters or these Hebrew letters that receive a dogish and have special things about them, okay? And so when we say begging to cap it, once again, that's where we're using English word letters like B, okay, B, G, okay, the, D, okay, K, 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 C, uh, uh, and then the F and the and the T. Bega de Kafet. See that? Mm -hmm. Now let's convert them over into our Hebrew characters. Uh, would be Be, okay, Gimel, uh, uh, Dalit, okay. Then our, our Kaf, right? right. Um, then um, the uh, Fe, hang that guy, right? Just so you can remember how to do that, right? And then the tape, right? Put a little kicker there. Just so you can make sure that you distinguish it between the hay and the uh, uh, the hay and the hay, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, remember that the, the, the top has a, a real lot of similarity to the hay. Mm -hmm. It also has a lot of similarity to, similarity to the hit, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I like to do a, a little hairdo and give it a shoe, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and did you did you catch that what I said about the 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 pay and the pay? It's just like the cough. Mm -hmm. I just hangs and just put a hangman there. Okay, yeah. with me, with me. It makes a, okay. So important about these, um, of these, um, excuse me, of these six. I I said five, and I and I I, I, I the other, after I left the other night, I go oh, I didn't put in the gmail. Okay. Mm -hmm. But as of, of these six, okay, only three of them, right, change their sound, okay? And then um, these others, uh, they, they, they get a doggish as well, but they don't change their sound. And they don't do what all the rest of the characters do when they get a doggish. All the rest of the characters, okay, when they get a doggish, Okay, if you have, for example, a mim, and it's got a, do a doggish in it, that means it's two, it equals two mims, okay, right? If you had a noon and it had a doggish in it, that equals two noons, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is an exception, <laughs> and that is uh, um, Aleph never gets a doggish, Ayan never gets a doggish, and in case you're fervently writing, I've actually got them up here, okay, so that you can you can see right here. Uh, wh what does it get a doggish? Olive, hey, uh, um, does it get a doggish? Well, hey does. Rarely, I'm not going to deal with it right now. As far as I'm, you're concerned, it doesn't get a doggish, okay? Uh, olive, iron, hey, hey does not get a doggish, and also then resh does not get a doggish. Okay, they'll never get a doggish. 
They won't have a dog in them, okay? So you don't have to worry about them. All the rest of them, all you got to just remember. Here's all you got to remember. Just remember the beggar to calf it. And if it's got a dogish in it and it's not begging to cap it, it gets doubled. That's just that simple. That's the only th rule that you need to remember. And and why this is important is because, um, and you don't have to remember this, but I'm just going to say it for those of you who may know this. There's doggish linne and there's doggish forte. And because of the unique things about this, when you have the doggish forte, in all the other characters, it changes the way the syllable goes down. And that's why you need to know about the dot. Okay, when did it when does the dot change where that syllable is gonna be emphasized? Okay? Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So that's really for the most part all that I wanted to say about the doggish tonight. And um, if you have any questions, you can email me, you can ask me even now. But just, I think the simplest thing is just remember, Bega de Cafet, okay? And just make a word. That's all that is. That, that word doesn't mean anything. It's not, well, what does Bega de Cafet mean in Hebrew? <laughs> it's a made up word for be, Gimel Dalet, um, Kaf, uh, Pe, or Fe, Top, okay? I, I just got to uh, think about it for a while. Now, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to reemphasize this over and again. I want to teach you Hebrew. I want to teach you the seven stems of the verbs. I want to teach you the various different forms of the nouns, singular, plural, as we learn it. Not to try to get all this stuff up front and get through way through all of this linguistic, you know, um, just information that overloads you before you ever get to start reading. I just want, I took my first Hebrew class in 1982 and I did that classical approach. And uh, by the third, I, I remember a guy, um, I think I told you this last time, he missed one class and he said, I thought this was introduction to Hebrew. I, this, 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 now we're advanced, everybody's talking Hebrew. But we, I, in the view of building vocabulary and the speed of college, we're just overbearing, overwhelming, and I don't want to do that. I want to do it in such a way that you're really going to learn the solid. You know, for years to come, we're going to be reading Hebrew together. We're going to be pointing out the words. You're going to be learning to recognize words. And then I'm going to teach you how to get at the roots later on. To get to learn how to get at a root of a word, you've got to be able to recognize what stem it's in, what verb stem it's in. And so, but to learn all that stuff right now, you know, you know, you would go cross-eyed if you want another third week on on uh, on consonants. And listen, I'm feeling you. I'm not making fun of you. No, we're laughing at. We're not laughing at you. We're laughing with you. Okay. <laughs> the reality of it is, it's better. I feel to to invite people into a non-intimidating or a less of an intimidating environment to learn such a strange language um, as, as Hebrew by just going slow and, and developing it. And so, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to show you that there's basically um, 14 vowels. In Hebrew, we call, it's called nechud, okay? Nechud. Not a kuh, but just a regular kuh. Nechud, okay? And um, uh, and what I do, and, and I'm not the only one that's done this. I've learned it from the experts. There's some great uh, linguists out there in Hebrew uh, that are native speakers and we have shown that we can actually take all of those 14 vowels and we can break them down into a simple a, e, e, o, u. And so, you know, the primarily the, the primary two vowels that you're going to see that's the a sound over and over again, and I'm just going to use the a if it is in your notes, okay, is what we would call the pata, Okay, you'll see that over and again, just a straight line underneath it, okay, and the gametes, okay. Both are ah, you see it's ah. And then there's another one that's a, li that's a, a little bit more of an intimidating character, and it's called, it's called the hatef pata and the hatef gametes, um, and um, for the ah sound, and I, and I do show it, uh, uh, I show it here. Um, it's it's uh, it's got an aw sound, but you're not going to run into it very much. Okay, so take a note of it. But that's the primary. You're going to see this over and over again. Ah, it's just ah. So if we went in here 
Ah, sound, right? Okay, let's put another constant. So tell me what's that sound? La, okay? <laughs> okay? Um, because actually, if I go through this, I can go la-di-da, okay? And because we go through here, and we'll, we'll, get, we'll get these other e, the e a, a sound, and we can just do all kinds of fun things with it. And one of the things that is very important is that's your syllable. A syllable is always going to be, it's always going to be a consonant plus a vowel, okay? Consonant plus a vowel, always. Or it could it be a consonant plus a vowel plus a consonant, okay? And that's the difference between what's referred to as a closed syllable and an open syllable. And it's not a big deal. Don't make it a big deal because you're going to get comfortable with the way that I'm going to show you transliteration and the way I'm going to walk you through transliteration and teach you transliteration to where that you're going to be able to sound these out, okay? And then you're going to run into some of these events where you're going, wait a minute, that syllable didn't work out right. What happened? Then I'm going to tell you why. And then at that moment in time when you're asking, wait a minute, why didn't my sound work? Then I tell you why it didn't work. It's going to mean more to you. And at that moment in time, it's not going to be information overload. It's going to be information needed. And I think that that's sometimes one of the biggest problems in education. It's information overload. Okay, I got so much information here. I don't know how to categorize it. I don't know how to put it in its proper category. And so, you know, that's hopefully you can, you know, appreciate what we're doing here. So if you see, if you see a, if you see this, if you see a, a dalit with a pata or a dalit with a gametz, okay? And you don't even have to remember these names. I just, I just know them, so I'm going to say them, okay? I'm not going to say line under it or a T under it, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm terrible. I'm, if you know me, I might. Writing in English is sloppy. My Hebrew is just as sloppy. Okay? So, it's da, da. No difference. Somebody said, well, then why do we have it? Because there are subtleties. There are unique things that will happen sometimes with a gamet at the beginning of a word that all of a sudden, what's going on with this thing? Because now it's whole and not call, but it's unique and it's rare and we don't need to get into it right now. You're going to figure it out later. 90% of the time, maybe even more than that, it's just going to be, ah, so why burden ourselves when we can learn so much Hebrew without that extra information? Doesn't that make sense? And so here we go. So now you got to tell me, you know, once again, go through. What, what's good to do is just go through and write every one of the letters out like this. What is this? Ha. Ha ha. Okay. And uh, it, so it doesn't matter what, what consonant you put them under, it's the sound of the consonant. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it, Tav. It's the sound of the consonant and the sound of the vowel underneath it. That's it. Okay? Ancient Hebrew and modern Hebrew is written without the vowels. Okay? Uh, because they knew the rules or. They knew the rules in ancient Biblical Hebrew, and believe me, Bib ancient Biblical Hebrew is not the same as modern Israeli Hebrew, okay? It's not the same. You develop a modern Israeli Hebrew vocabulary, you can speak, you can, and you can speak fine, but you can't, you don't have a Biblical vocabulary. You understand the symbols that exist within modern Israeli Hebrew, much of them are overlap. But then there are others that aren't, and, and you, you'll learn that as you go along, and I'm not going to burn with you right now, burn it with you right now. But nonetheless, in about the 11th century, at the revival of the Hebrew language, if you would, uh, for, the, for modern times, the guys who really knew how to do the intonations, how to read it, pronounce it properly, put the vowels in there so all the rest of people learning Hebrew would know how to properly pronounce it. So it's the vowel that gives the consonant the additional sound based upon the consonant that follows. So I really want to know. I, I, so I, I want to know. How do I pronounce this word? Okay? So I've got, I've got, I don't, the, uh, Aleph is silent. I really don't know how to pronounce this word. So somebody's got to teach me. So somebody says, okay, we'll teach you how to do it. Av. What does that mean? Father. Okay? That's what these vowels are. Okay? It allows us to understand 
what the sound of the consonant is. And I like to use the olive because the olive is silent. So when we look, now I know that when you look at the uh, the e eh sound, ah, eh, okay, we're going to always trans. This is, and by the way, this is how we're going to pretty much. This, the sound is how we're going to do the transliteration. I got the rules of transliteration here, okay, down below. But the, but when you look at all of these vowels, okay, and I'm just going to show you these vowels. Now, I'm going to show you something about these vowels. All these vowels have an I. They have a set of eyes. This guy's really got a good face, okay? Okay, I'm going to blow this up. Can you see those eyes? Okay? Those eyes are telling you, anytime you see any eyes up there, okay, it's telling you this is that eh sound. Ah, eh. This is the eh sound. Mm -hmm. This is what we call a shigol, okay? And then what we have after that is we'll have um, a, a sere. See the eyes? Sere, okay? Then we'll have a uh, sere yod, okay? And when you see this, it's just a. You know, there's people look at that, they'll look at that in the word and they're trying to pronounce the sere and the yod. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. <laughs> it isn't gonna work. And it's not just a diphthong. Are there diphthongs in, uh, and that's not uh, flip flops. Are there diphthongs in the Hebrew language? Yes, there are. Don't need to worry about them right now. Okay? So, uh, got Sere, we got, um, uh, oh yeah, and we have um, uh, a Hatef Segol, okay? And Hatef Segol is the, the, the uh, Segol with a Schwa. And I'm going to tell you about the Schwa in a bit, okay? Just don't worry about, my goodness, now we got three sets of eyes up there, okay? Just as long as you see two dots set beside each other to where it makes an eye, a pair of eyes, you know you are in the territory of a, eh, okay? Anytime, okay, got the eyes? Anybody got any questions about the eyes? <laughs> I think you have an extra dot, the, um, the five. Where? Here? Bottom all of, yeah, I think it's just No, this is, a, this is a, this is a, 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 a hot test Okay. Okay, so what it does is it takes this Chagall, okay? This is the Chagall. And it puts the schwa. Okay. If I did a schwa is not really a vowel. Some people say it's a vowel, and there are vocal vowels, vocal schwas or schwa, uh, but the schwa is silent, and it just it's a pla it takes it's a placeholder for where there is no vowel. Okay. There are some times where it is going to be pronounced at the beginning of a word. It would be pronounced. Okay. It's rarely going to be at the beginning of the word. It's usually going to be found right here in this next syllable, okay? Right here. Okay, something like that. So but vowels, I'm, I'm sorry, vowels yeah. will be applied to, can be applied to all consonants? The schwa? The schwa yeah. can go to any consonant, yeah. The schwa can be on any consonant. And you'll see it, you'll see it probably on every consonant. It's going to be a way to help us understand how to break the word up properly. It's going to help us understand how to pronounce the syllable, how to pronounce uh, the consonant vowel consonant sometimes, or the consonant vowel uh, consonant consonant, especially when you've got a doggish there. Okay? Um, but I'm not, don't worry about that right now. There's a, the schwa will pr pr produce some interesting things along the way in pronunciation. And what's, what I discovered is this, for myself. I discovered more about the schwa just learning how to pronounce words than I did by reading the voluminous things that they have on the schwa and the rules for the schwa, silent and vocal, okay? And so I just feel it's a better, more creative, more fun way to learn the rules, okay? And those are the, those are the toughest ones, uh, the, uh, hot, uh, the, uh, Hot sugar. Okay. So those are the three right there. Um, did I see? I got. Uh, da, 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 da. I think I got everybody. Yeah. Okay. I may not have. I've got a new Hebrew um, uh, font, and and I'm just learning how to use it on my computer, and it, it is, it's not really working out so good for me. Okay. So that's the. 
Once again, we have in five vowels in, in English, A, E, I, O, U, right? This is just A, E, E, A, E, E, O, U. That's all, A, E, E, O, U. And then just put it, go through there and just put them all with all the different consonants. And, uh, uh, forgive me, with all the different uh, yeah, consonants or, or Hebrew characters, and, and it gets you comfortable with it, and you're, you know, and you're well on your way. Um, then, then there's the O sound, and the O sound is going to be, and once again, I'm just using the silent, um, I'm using the silent olive to, to make this point. And it's this dot sitting up here, just hanging in the sky, okay? We call it a holom, okay? And that's just, oh, oh, okay? So here, how about this one? Low. That's, that's not how you write the proper way to say no, but low is no in Hebrew. Low. Okay? Uh, to. Okay? Fo. Right? Okay? Good old mo. And then, you know, just start, you know, making your little rhymes. You know, say, pay, fay, hey, may, ve, lay, day, whatever. Actually, it'd be a good way to do uh, tongues. Okay, but, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, so we got the, we got the, uh, the holum, and then we have the holum bob, okay? And, and basically, it, here, with my font that I was using, it just looks like an I or a straight line. It's not, it's the bob with the dot over top of it, okay? That both of those are O. Let me separate them so you can see them a little bit better. There's your olive with the whole one. Ah, sorry about that, guys. I, just, I know that looked like Arabic. That looks like Arabic, too. This is a dot, solid dot, okay? And then there is what we call the whole and vav. Now the dot's right over top of the, of the vav. There's your O sound. A lot of people were asking me, oh, I need an O sound for my translation. And I don't have an O. You got your O's all over now. You got your O's coming and going. You got your A's. You got your S. You got your E's. A, E, A, E, E. Okay. Um, and then we've got the O sound. How would you write that with a C? Because the scene already has the, a dot this over it. Right here? Mm -hmm. with, a, with a C. Scene. Oh, with a scene? Yeah. Okay. Scene. Okay. Scene. Okay. Now, what are you going to do if you got a holum? You want to put a holum with a scene? Right. Okay, let's do that. And you'll see it. And it, it, and it can be confusing. It looks just like that. Just two dots up there. Hanging out. In the near vicinity. You with me? Good question. Very good question. Okay. And so now, uh, uh, it, oh, the U sound is got a, a, a fun little character, caboose. Okay. Caboose. Caboose. Ooh. There's your U sound, basically. Ooh. Okay. Ah, eh, e, o, u. You with me? And then there is um, the shurup, which is the vav with the dot right in the vav. Like it's what? What does that look like? Looks like a doggish. How do you know if you got a u? Or you got a doggish, which equals a double V, double vav. How do you know? Practice makes perfect. Recognizing the word. Did you get that? All of this is in your notes. All this is in your notes. I, I, what I try to do is, outside of the notes, is I do try to emphasize a few things. So. What part didn't you get? You want me to go through the U again? Let me go through the Vav. Okay, the Shuruk. Right? It's just a Vav with a dot in it. 
It's a bob that looks like it's got a doggish, right? Right. Doesn't it? Everybody mm -hmm. see yes. that? Yes. Okay. How do you know if it's a doggish or a shirook, a vowel? Huh? One of the ways is that a lot of times you're going to see a vowel right underneath it. Or the majority of the time you're going to see a vowel or you'll see a schwa, which is a placeholder. What do you know now? That's not a vowel. You don't have vowel <laughs> vowels. Every syllable is a consonant yeah, plus a vowel or a consonant plus a vowel plus a consonant. You don't have a consonant plus a vowel plus a vowel. Okay, that's what that would be. That's one of the important points for the placeholder or the schwa, okay, to make sure that you didn't mistake that for a consonant. So, practice makes perfect. You're going to be able to see that. So I don't think that there's an exception for that rule right there. I don't think there is. I'm not an expert linguist in Hebrew for every form, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, what you will major, the majority of what you'll see is this. So just go with this, and it's going to work with the most of the time for you. Because where we're going to move you to is I'm going to move you to doing things like, like what I'm going to show you right now. Okay? And this is, um, this is found in, this is part of a song that you're going to learn before this quarter is over. And this is found in Psalms 136. And um, and I'm gonna. It's, I hate getting over here in front of you, but I'm gonna try to write this out for you, okay? And I, and I hopefully, I hopefully all of you can say this with me. What's the first consonant, okay? In this in this Hebrew writing right here, what's the first consonant? Hey. 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 What is the second? Yeah. What is the second? Vav. Huh? Vav. It is what? It's a hole and vav, isn't it? Hole and vav. Isn't it a hole and vav? It's a hole and vav. So it's what is it? Is it ever consonant consonant? No. It's always consonant vowel. Where's that vowel? Here, that vowel is sitting right beside of it. You we like the vowels under it, okay? But the uh, but you can't get the hole and vav or the holem, okay? or the shuruk underneath it. It's got to be beside of it. Okay, so that's consonant vowel. What do we have right now? What do we have right now? We have a syllable. Okay, if you look down below this, you can see my transliteration. You can see that is ho. Mm. Do you see that? Yeah. Right below it? Everybody see that? Yes. So right below the Hebrew, I have the transliteration. So I have the Hebrew going from right to left. Mm -hmm. I have the transliteration going from left to right, which you need to get used to writing it that way. But for now, just so that there's no mistakes, I'm going to write it right underneath it. That's your first syllable. Ho. Oh. And then give me the next, give me the next consonant there. Dalet. What's the next consonant? Dalit. <coughs> okay. And then what's the next what's what's after that? Hobble. Uh, that's right. It is. It's the sharuk. It's the vav with a with a dot with the dot in it, right? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. And what do we have there? We got do, right? See down there. Yeah. So here's our syllable. What do we have? Hadu. Hadu. Hadu adoni adoni. This this particular phrase is hadu le adoni ha adonim. Ki le olam hastu, which is um, give thanks to the Lord of Lords for His mercy endures forever. Okay, so hodu. That means give praise, give thanks. Um, one thing you could say is throw yourself at it. <laughs> hodu is a powerful word. It uh, literally it, to cast one cast. Cast it, cast yourself down, to throw yourself at it. Uh, so we're not going to say throw yourself at it. He's the Adonai. He's the Lord of Lords. We're going to give thanks because it does mean give thanks. It's just give thanks and with with an overtone of you're throwing your whole self into it. 
you're casting your whole self into it. Okay? You're, you're destroying yourself. You know, wear yourself out. Okay? And now this is what you're going to start doing. We're going to start taking this relationship of the Hebrew character to the English character and we're going to start writing it now in a meaningful way because we have all of the things that we need, both consonant and vowel, to do it. And yeah, the only way you're going to get good at this is practice this. And one of the best things for you to do, don't do Psalms 119, uh, Annalyn. Psalms 136, because it's a great psalm, and we're going to learn the first three verses as a song. Kitov Adonai. And so it's going to, you're going to love it. Kile Olam Hastu. I won't get into it right now. Okay, here we go. Adul Adonai Kito Kile Olam Hastu. Give thanks to the Lord, He is good. Kitov. It's good. Kitov. I gave you that one last uh, last time. From Genesis. Kito. It's good. Kito. Okay? Now you can, before this is all over, you're going to be able to go, Hodu la Adonai. So if a Hebrew person says something nice, you say, Hodu la Adonai. Give thanks to the Lord. That's as good as, that's better than Baruch Hashim. Because no one really knows what you're saying other than bless Him. Okay? Now you're saying, give thanks to the Lord. Hodu la Adonai. Okay, so and we're going to show you this. I wanted to show you this because I'm, I'm emphasizing. I pulled this out because I wanted to emphasize the things about the vowels that may not be intuitive after I got finished with my little speech on vowels and how they work. Okay? And especially as I just showed you, you can't get a whole involved. But underneath consonant, and every syllable must have a consonant vowel. vowel or a consonant vowel consonant. Okay, and when you have a consonant vowel consonant, it's going to have a placeholder or schwa, or it's going to be a, just a consonant vowel consonant in the word. Okay, so the next one, give me the neck, give me what the next uh, the letter is. Lamed. In the next word, Lamed. Lamed. There's a pot under it. And it has a pata under it? Pata under it, uh huh. Okay. Pata not a gamets? No. Okay. Give me the next one. <laughs> Give me the next. Okay, well let's just stop there. Okay. So let's just stop there and let's 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 do a transliteration of that. Okay, what is that? What should be the transliteration? La. 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 Okay. La. La. And it always will be that. What am I teaching you? 95% accuracy in pronunciation. The first thing you're going to do is you're always going to do the transliteration until you really get good. And then you won't have to write it out anymore because you can visualize it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you write it out, task at time. Once again, if we were dialoguing and we were in an environment where we're dialoguing with other people, there's another way to learn a language. But when you're just basically learning a language as you're reading it, the only way you're going to get it is, a, is the sound of your voice and relating it back to the sounds that you hear every day. Okay? So give me the next, give me the next consonant. It's olive. olive. What's underneath the olive? Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. What's underneath the olive? Somebody. The line with two dots. Huh? Is it the is it the T? Yeah. No. The gamut? Huh? No, it's a line with two dots. A line with two dots. It's a line with two dots. Uh -huh. It's a it's so it's the hatif pata. Right. Pata. Right? It's a it's a it's a hatif pata. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Hatif, I I just I can't see it up here very well because of the li of the light, but yeah, it is. It's a hatif pata. Now, a hatif pata is, I don't know that I put it in, oh yeah, I did, didn't I? Hatif yeah. yeah, I did, I give you a hatif yeah. pata. What is the sound? Ah. Ah, there we go again. We're just on all over the place over here. Okay, <laughs> but what are we doing? What are we doing? We're starting what? A new syllable, aren't we? Because what is a syllable made up of? Consonant vowel. Consonant vowel. And when you have a consonant vowel, 
But in the next one, once again, it's another syllable. So, la, a, uh, and then the next one is, what's the next letter? Dalit. 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 Is there a vowel? Yes, a yes. Holam. What is it? A holam. Holam, very good. What's the next concept? Noon. 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 And what is the vowel? Is it a single dot? Yes. Any yod or a double two, dot? Two dots and a yod. So that is a serra, okay? Sera. So that is a serra yod. Serra yod. Okay? So what do we know about this? We know that the DO is a, uh, we know that's a DO right there, right? Mm -hmm. And we know this is a, the A, E, E, e sound. So this is ni, mm -hmm. ni. D, okay, and so look at my transliteration over here for it, la a do, huh? And we're just gonna spell it with a noon, okay, right? We're gonna go n e y, okay? E, ni, a e i, ni, okay? Is everybody there? Yes. La a do ni. which means Lord. Okay? Everybody with me? Yes. Go. So let's just walk through this again. Because you follow these transliteration rules. That's what I'm giving you. I'm speaking it out, what I'm giving you here in these five transliteration rules right below this line. I'm just walking you through it. Okay? So give me the next consonant. Hey, hey. With a line and a dot underneath. The next consonant is a hey. A hey with a line and a dot underneath it. It are, are yeah, we are a, we talking are we talking about hatef pata again? It's a T. The T? Mm -hmm. Gummits. Okay? A gummits. And then what's the next consonant? Aleph. Aleph. Huh? Aleph? Mm -hmm. uh. With a... what's the what's the vowel? Uh. The rear one. It's a it's a hot comments. Right. Hot tip pata. It's a hot tip pata, right? Hot yeah, with the two dots. Hot tip pata. Okay, next. Dalit. 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 It's nice when you know what how to pronounce the vowels. Most importantly, I want you to recognize it. What's underneath the dalit? It's the vowel. There is nothing underneath nothing it, is it? What's the what's the vowel? The vowel is Holum. Honey, where are you at? You got it last time. You're blocking me, so I can't. Wait, it's on your page. I know, but I'm. Crazy. Okay, give give me the next constant. <laughs> noon, noon, noon. Dot underneath it with a uh, yod. yod. So it's a herak yod, and then what is the final form? Mem, 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 mem. Final form, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to look down at our transition. Tra we don't really have to look at it. We can just go down here and we can go ha and we'll check ourselves. We'll go ha, a, do, ni, and that's going to be one. That's going to be pronounced as one vowel there, okay? So that's one going to be count pronounced as one vowel. Now let's go check. Let's go up there. Ha, a, do, ni, ha. Ha a do name. Well, what happened? Ha a do. Huh? Ha a do. Huh. What? What happened? Why did we have all of a sudden, where we don't just break it out as two separate vowels, but now it's a a do. We got our special rare character. <laughs> It, ha it well, it, it certainly does have something to do with this right here, which is another word. That's a definite article, or it switches the. Every time you see that, it's the. So it's Lord, Lords, the Lord of uh, it's Lord of the Lords, because I'm going to tell you something else. I'm going to throw this at you. When you have a final mem, that's plural form right there. That's always a plural form. Final mem. Your plural masculine is a, a, is a mem, okay? But don't worry about it right now. 
other than the fact that now you're getting to you're getting to notice that this is uh, give thanks, okay? Uh, even though I didn't write this out, uh, to la is to to Lord, okay? And then of is always assumed of the Lords, okay? Okay, Lord of the Lords, okay? And then give me the next character. Son. The next character. Cough with a dot underneath. It, it, it is what? Cough with a dot underneath. It is a cough. It is a cough because it has a doggish. Correct? Correct. Yes. So it's got a K sound, right? Or a CH sound, rather. And it's got the dot. Does it have a yod? Yes. Okay, so it's a herrick yod. Okay, so that's a vowel. You really want to get that. You really want to get that. Okay. And you just learn to recognize that word right there, which means uh, it is for, because, okay? But usually it is or for, um, maybe, maybe this. And then give me the next, uh, and then let's, let's go ahead and let's look at our cancer transliteration. It just, what is it? Our transliteration is, in this particular instance, we just going K-I, but we're not doing that. You could do that, but we're just kind of sticking with the E-Y sound, if you would, but it's K-I, because it's A-E-E, okay? We're just gonna go with this, the double E sound, A-E-E, -E. okay? These are the subtleties, key, how do you want to how do you want to spell it? K I or K E, or K E Y? Okay, the sound is key. Like you put a key in the in the ignition. So I say let's just spell it that way. Let's just always use the E Y. You're going to be close enough. Use this as your grid. Always use it as your grid for your vowel. Of course, you know I didn't put the E Y to E E. I should have put the E Y, but E E or E Y. It's going to sound the same. A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y, okay? It's hard sometimes to distinguish between E, I, and Y, right? You don't have to go O, H, O, or O, O. You could just put U, but let's just let's just go on with this. What's the next one? How many minutes do I have? I'm about done, huh? Two minutes. Two minutes. What's the next consonant? Lamed. 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 Next consonant? Uh, Ayan. Ayan. Very good. Next consonant? Lamed. 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 Next consonant. Final mem. Final mem. Final mem. Where's our vowel? Um, Where's our vowel? You missed the vowel. Never can be consonant, consonant. Where's that vowel? It's above yeah. the I. I N. Lamed. Holam. Right? Mm -hmm. That's that's that important consonant. Okay? Uh, what we what do we have under the Lamed? That it has to be a schwa. I can't really see, but it has to be a schwa. Mm -hmm. Because I understand there's got to be a placeholder there mm -hmm. with no vowel, and I know that that's going to be pronounced because it's at the beginning of the word, and I know that that's a prefix. But you don't know that yet. Okay? Le olam. Okay? And so how are we going to write that? We're going to go up here, we're going to look at this, and we're going to go L-E, le, okay? And we're going to go uh, vowel O, vowel Lamed. What's underneath the Lamed? Is it a schwa? It's a T. Huh? It's a T. T shaped. T shaped? Mm -hmm. Gamets. Le O Lam. That's your final vowel right there. See that? I'm oh, forgive me. Your final syllable right there. Lam. Leolam. Olam is the word that is used over and again. It's a very important vocabulary word. It means forever, eternal. Love all of you. See you next time. Now, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you've got questions. They're just like, wait a minute, I missed this. This doesn't um, even make sense. Is there good sense in here?